Hi, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this Adobe Premiere Pro tutorial, we're going to take a look at understanding the program window and touch on a couple other things like the reference window. But this is one of the most important windows in Premiere Pro because this is where we can actually see the timeline that we're working on as we scrub through. And this is where a lot of our editing work is, is seen and done. So there's actually a lot of adjustment that you can have. Like you see, I have these guides up and uh, a lot of options that you have that you might not be familiar with. So to begin, I'm actually just going to go to Window, Workspaces, Reset to Saved Layout. Just in case you're not seeing what I'm seeing or yours is different, you can always work, go to the Window section to open or close any panels, no matter what version or workspace layout you're in. So not to get confused here with this other monitor, this is the Source Monitor. I actually do have a tutorial separately on the Source Monitor, but in general, this is just kind of to like scrub through whatever clips you want. But I'm gonna just kind of stretch this layout back out how I want and just kind of open it up so you can see. And a couple things to look at when you're in the program window. As you can see, when I click it, we get this blue highlight bounded box and there's all these buttons. So you have your traditional play and stop. You have your scrubber that'll scrub through. Uh, you also have your timestamp or where your playhead is at. You also have the mode. So fit mode will fit it to the window. You can also do 50% or 25% or whatever. This can be really useful, especially when you are animating graphics or text or doing animations where you want to start out of bounds and then bring them back in. And you also have options. So right now you see I have these guides and I have these different rulers, which you probably don't normally see. And I even get asked sometimes um, about transparency, like how do you see this transparency grid? Why is mine showing up black? So that's all under this settings wrench, this little icon here that you might not go into too often, but you have all these options for your program window. So for example, I can show rulers or guides. I can hide the rulers or guides. Uh, I can even clear the guides. So I can clear those guides out this is how yours probably normally looks. And you can also choose how to show transparency. So under the transparency grid, you can check it on or off. And by default, this is what Premiere shows as transparent is just black, which I think can confuse some people at first. Um, it's, this is not actually black, it's transparent. There just happens to be no, no layers. But if you do want to show transparency, if you're more used to that in Photoshop or whatever, you can show transparency in this way so that when you're working on a clip that has some sort of effect on it, like a gradient wipe, for example, you can see what's happening. But there's also other views that you can do. So this is what that would look like without. In this case, the transparency is just showing up as black. But if I was to put another layer underneath, you'd see that it's not actually black. It, it is transparent. So that's a cool little gem that's tucked away in there. Another really functional one that you might actually be reaching for more often is in this little menu here, the playback resolution. By default, it's full. But when you're working on something like a 4K clip, like these are, you can see in the info tab, 4,000 by 2,000 pixels, it's 4K resolution. Sometimes it'll be hard to play back on your machine. You can see this red line means things might not be buffered. And if I was to add some more complicated animation or keyframing, we're already seeing a little bit of lag being introduced, which can make editing and cutting difficult because a lot of work, a lot of the work editing is playing back and back and cutting and back and forth. So to help that, sometimes you can lower the playback resolution from full to a half a quarter, an eighth, all the way even down to a sixteenth. And another tip is this is just the playback resolution. Resolution. You can also choose the paused resolution in that setting wrench. Um, so you might say like I, I lowered it, but why isn't it actually getting lowered? Because it's still paused. So sometimes you don't need to see your video in crispy, clear quality. Um, you can just see it in a lower quality if it helps you play it back smoothly and edit the points that you need to edit. But again, it's not a fix all. Sometimes you do just have to press I, O, create an in and out point and press enter. 
to render out a little bit that you want to look at how an effect result came out of. Um, you can also see that in the sequence render into out and then that red bar would turn green. Additionally, another option you have when playing back in the wrench is to loop playback. So once it reaches the end here, it will just start right back at the beginning of the clip. This can be nice if you're watching a certain section over and over and just kind of trying to get a feel for reviewing your edit. Um, traditionally, that is turned off and you will see that it just will stop once it gets to the end. But carrying along here, you also have an, some other options such as step by step. So one frame forward, one frame back. You also have taking a screenshot, which is really, really useful. So let's say I was to do a thumbnail out of this video. I can find a point that I like. I can find the exact frame. Let me just change that pause resolution back. I can find a frame that I like. I can click this export frame button, shortcut shift and E, and then I can save that wherever I want. And I can also choose to import it into the project. And when you do that, it'll just export this frame as a JPEG. And now you have it to use however you want, or you can just take it from your desktop into Photoshop or wherever you want. It's really useful for many different effects or reasons to create a screenshot. And that's that button right there. You can also create markers and other things, but you'll notice sometimes when you click something or do certain edits, it takes you into the reference panel. And I think this can confuse a lot of people too. It's like, why am I not able to add text or do certain things? You see when I click on the text tool, it's because you're in the reference panel. The reference panel is just meant as kind of like a reference frame for you. Let's say if you are working side by side and you can drag any of these panels around, but Let's say I am working on the clip and I've added some text design and I just want to be able to reference how that text is going to look on this exact moment, you know, when we get the, the face reveal and the smile. In this case, uh, I might be doing an animation or editing at this point of the clip, but perhaps it's most crucial to me to make sure that I always reference back that I don't cover her pupils or something important at this frame. So just one example of, of why you might want to be switching back from the reference in the program window, but also to make sure that certain, to not forget that certain things only work in the program window. And lastly, I guess I'll show you about the guides. So if you are working on your clip, you can also show rulers and you see that will pop up. And you can even right click these and change them from pixel amount. So since this is a 4,000 uh, pixel wide image, you can see it goes all the way out. Or you can change it to percentage. So if I know for some reason I need a certain logo to appear, you know, with a margin of 50 pixels or 100 pixels on the screen, or if I just want to put something exactly 50% in, as I drag, you can see it'll tell me as I hover over that it's 50%. But another way to do that is also just to right click add guide and I can add a left or right guide at exactly 50 or whatever amount. And you can change it from vertical or horizontal. And you can change the, the guide color by default. It's this bright blue, but if that clashed with your image, for some reason you can change it. But when you do that, it'll add it. So in this case, I got a I messed up and I added the guide at 50 pixels when instead I should right click add guide at 50%. But yeah, you can do both options. And then when you are working with things like text layers and whatnot, you can move them around and you can see it'll snap to the guides. So it'll snap to these different guides that I made and that can come in handy for all different kinds of reasons. Um, but also with text, if you're in the essential graphics panel, you can always highlight the text and you do have centering and alignment options there as well. But this can be useful for, you know, logos or other graphics or PNGs or just snapping certain things into a guide. So if I didn't want to see those anymore, I could also go to the wrench and either hide them or clear the guides completely. 
but that can be useful. And there are other options in here as well. You do have your safety margins. You do have a bunch of other detailed stuff, which I will save out of the basic general idea of this video. Um, but hopefully this has given you some better understanding of the tools that are available for you in the program window, kind of what the program window is. And 90% of the time, you're just going to be playing, pausing, and scrubbing through and using the program window to look and edit. You're not going to be using every single one of these little side features, but it's nice to know. If you want to check out some other tutorials on understanding the layout of Premiere Pro, you can find a bunch more in the playlist on my channel. Like I said, I have some going more over the source monitor and the, the project media panel and the timeline and all the toolbar and whatnot. My name is Justin Odisho. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.